490. Here was my campsite last night. I didn't get here till about eight o'clock. Uh, had a little uh, fire pit, some seats. The trail is actually right there. And I did have some uh, awesome view, but it started raining last night. And it's all whited out now. Uh, I read a sign when I was coming up the mountain that said this forest was uh, forested back in uh, 1975. You can see stumps everywhere. And you can see the small pine trees that are growing. So uh, I had cell service last night. First time, Verizon, one bar. And I've decided uh, I'm going to uh, stay in Stevenson, which is on uh, uh, in Washington, uh, right across from the Bridge of the Gods. I'm going to take a couple days off and try to get these ankles healed. So I booked a room for three nights. And I'm going to head that way here in about an hour. Well, I started breaking down our camp. Right by my tent is a blueberry bush. I could have had fresh blueberries in my oatmeal. My tent was right here. And then over here, I got huckleberry bushes. The ones with the uh, red tip leaves. Holy crap. Smorgasbord. My Sunday morning, August 18th. Woohoo! I'll just eat them right off the bush. Good morning, cloudy, misty. Uh, what day is it? <laughs> Sunday, August 18th. Oh my lord, there's so many blueberries and huckleberries. I have eaten so many this morning, probably wasted 30 minutes. Oh my god. And these are huge, plump, ripe blueberries and huckleberries. Oh, look at my. I don't know if they're going to... My fingers are all purple. So, anyway, it is the 50th day on trail. Uh, I had this... I had one bar of Verizon last night. First time on the whole trail I've had Verizon. So, as some of you had seen, I put some pictures up. and uh, I got to... When I left yesterday... <clears throat> There was a water source about, I don't know, a third away up the mountain. And then I was gonna fill up and look for tent sites. And I got there and it was bone dry. And nobody had commented whatsoever that it was empty. No comments whatsoever. Usually people post that. You're like, uh, on these waypoints on gut hooks, you can leave comments like, stream flowing, plenty of water, good flow, and everybody does it. But on this one, they had nothing bone dry so I knew on top of the mountain there was a spring that was off trail but it said uh, has been reported dry the last couple of years uh, but it wasn't for certain so I mean I had no choice so I started heading up the mountain it's probably like six o'clock now and it was a big climb oh my lord giant blueberry gotta eat oh these are so big and plump <laughs> plus I have no water so I'm trying to eat as many of these as I can bear with me here these are too good to pass up <laughs> and they have huckleberries too you know I, I'm decided huckleberries are better they're sweeter Look at that bad boy. Ooze and juice. Okay, so anyway, I'm out of water. I'm climbing that mountain. And it is, oh man, it had switchbacks. It was forever. So all of a sudden, a girl comes by. We had to cross a dirt road. And I asked her, was there any water on top? And she said, no, there's not water for a long, long time. So I was explaining about the bone dry stream and she said they were all she said her and there's four hikers behind her going to rock creek and that's where i filled up 
down there at the bottom where I said it was a beautiful camp spot and I would have stayed there, but it was only 10 miles. She says, well, I can give you a little water. She says, I only got three miles to go. And so I handed her my one liter and she topped it, filled it. And then she said there was a, her name was Shasta. She was from Australia. So she said there was a guy behind her and I can't not remember his trail name now. It started with a B. But uh, she said when he comes by, she described him. She said, uh, he's got plenty of water. He'll be glad to give you a little more because uh, he, he's camping with us at Rock Creek. And uh, so anyway, I passed it, caught up with him and come on. I mean, look how big these boys are. <laughs> These are the biggest blueberries I've ever seen. And they are everywhere. And, uh, <laughs> and so anyway, he I had a, my 700 milliliter bottle. So he had a one and a half liter bottle. He said, hell, you can have it all. He said, I don't, I was wondering why I filled this thing up. I said, well, I said, I only need this bottle filled. I said, liter and a half of camp's fine so he topped that one off for me so i get going i finally get up to the top of the mountain and i find some camp spots but it's raining and the wind was whipping and it was coming right up the face of that mountain and i didn't like the camp spots they were um slant they just weren't good so all of a sudden here comes a german couple and they said uh there were some about a mile away and uh, he said that yeah, they weren't the greatest then he said there's an off trail up here just a couple hundred yards and he said it goes uphill and i'd already read it was some view up there and a lot of times these locals will make camps so i decided i'm gonna do that and it was three quarters of a mile i start hiking up and it's bushy and there are blueberries and huckleberries everywhere, unpicked. It was weedy. I just got soaked. Get all the way to the top and it runs into a dirt road. <laughs> There's nothing up there. I was pissed. <laughs> so I had to come all the way back down, another three quarter miles. Then I decided to go back to where I originally had looked. And it was only, like I said, three, 400 yards from there. So I go back there now, it's like dark because it's on the back side, sun setting on the other side of the mountain. And I just, it was crappy. And the wind, it was cold. So I said, screw it, I'm gonna push on. So I guess I hiked about, I don't know, another mile and boom, right off the trail. And I did, took a video of it this morning, so you'll see it. it. Was an awesome campsite. I don't think the German guy had seen that because it's kind of hidden had some little trees in front of it. So I got there about 8.15, set my tent up. It had stopped raining, thank goodness. It's just kind of uh, fog mist. So I got through everything inside. I just jumped in the tent. It took me about 30 minutes to unpack everything and blow my mattress, all that crap. So hell, I don't even start cooking my dinner at nine o'clock. And it's got to sit, uh, sit steep for 30 minutes. So I didn't even eat dinner at 9.30. Cooked in the tent, ate in the tent. And uh, then got on Facebook. <laughs> so anyway, speed things up. I uh, had already mentioned about uh, staying in Stevenson, which is basically on the Washington side of the Bridge of the Gods. It's just a regular town, it's super hiker friendly. The roadway in the only hotel is super hiker friendly. They even come pick you up at the bridge. And uh, Cascade Locks is a tourist town, so. And I'm gonna stay until my ankles are healed. I don't care if it takes a week. Same way I went ahead and booked rooms last night. They're only 75 bucks a night. It's a pretty nice hotel. And it's got everything there, bars, restaurants, Grocery store, pharmacy, everything's a walking distance. So I am booked it for three nights, but I think I'll probably stay longer. 
and decide what I am going to do about flipping. Now I'm kind of thinking, you know, I'd hate to really flip because if I don't, if I flip when I come back to finish it, I'm gonna have to flip around, like, you know, I'm gonna have to do part of Oregon and flip down to North NoCal. So now I'm thinking, like a lot of these people are doing, hell, let's I'm just do the damn half the trail. I can uh, actually probably more than half. Go ahead and do all of Oregon. <laughs> Got a hiker coming up. How's it going? Good. You coming from Cascade Locks? Yes, I am. Yeah. I think I, you're YouTubing. Yes, I am. Yeah. Hey, let me try. I saw my. Well, to continue, I had to stop talk. I recognize her. I've been, hey, she's uh, from New Zealand and she's YouTubing. I was watching her at my sister's house before I left to start my hike. I think she was the wandering. Oh, I can't even remember now. She had a cool name, but she was in the Sierras when I was at my sister's. And she was going through it when it was tough. So she's actually done the whole trail. And when I was talking, she could hear me about my dilemma. She agreed with me. She said, if you're gonna have to get off trail and you can't get through the Sierras, she said, I don't agree with all these people that are flipping and because they're not finishing the trail and taking shortcuts. And if I flip half of Oregon, half of no cow, you know, the odds are I may not come back and do it. So I think, uh, like the guy from Alabama, well, he actually is skipping one section of Oregon, but that's it. Just do the hike and get as far as I can to the Sierras. <clears throat> if it's, you know, it could be a late snowfall possibility I could see some of it and then come back next year and start in the desert with the rest of these nobos and it, that way it's a continuous hike I'm not flipping skipping around so I'm really leaning toward that now so take a three four five days off get my ankles filled and she she said Oregon is beautiful and uh, so I really don't want to skip anything but man, I want to see those Sears, but they're not going anywhere. So I'll think about that for the next few days. And uh, that was cool to meet her. Her name's Kristen. And I'll uh, plug her channel when I can't remember the name of it. But uh, yeah, she was pretty, she's super nice. Wow, so she's got 500 miles to go. She's done. I told her she was about the only... About now the 10th person I've met that's actually done the whole trail. She said they're caught, I told her about calling the uh, flippers dolphins. She said they call them no bow, no snow. <laughs> they didn't want to deal with the snow in the Sierras. And she said she's been hearing, like I said a minute ago, that once they flip and skip, then they start taking shortcuts and the easy alternates and skip hard parts and, uh, you know, like I was talking to those German girls. Head southeast. Talking to those German girls yesterday. Um, yeah, they were talking about skipping this, skipping that. And, and then it's not a continuous through hike, like she said. So I kind of agree with that. So anyway, I have about seven, eight miles to get to Stevenson. And... Uh, I'll probably if I start head south on Pacific Crest. Sorry, I have the uh, Google on because I have to take a uh, road somewhere to get to Stevenson, get off trail, and then when I head south on Pacific Crest Trail toward Pacific Crest Trail. I heard you, you bonehead. I'm on the Pacific Crest Trail. I don't know if you could hear that. Head on the Pacific Tr Crest Trail toward Pacific Crest Trail. All right, so anyway, I'm going to get hiking, and I'll talk to you later. See you, bye.
So anyway, back to what I was talking about, about the through hike. And, oh, I wonder if this is the road I gotta take. <clears throat> so anyway, I was saying uh, I gotta take a dirt road because the trail kind of goes away from Stevenson. And then when I come back, I'll be back to where I'm getting off at. So anyway, uh, the uh, young couple I've been hiking with, Fairweather, and, um, and I forgot her name, the goat, <laughs> something goat. Oh, I got too much on my mind. That's what they're doing. They're hiking half the trail this year, half next year. They're going to, because it's just hard to get uh, time-wise on the Sierras. You, you got to be out of there pretty much in our middle of October and because it like I said winter can hit that place anytime you know you never know sometimes it doesn't snow until November but you do not want to be in the Sierras and when it dumps three feet of snow and you can't see the trails and then you may have to hike 20 30 miles to get out of there I mean people die in there <laughs> so uh We'll see. I'm going to think about it. Uh, and I, like I was mentioned yesterday, I really think I'm going to need a bigger backpack for the Sierras for the carry the bear canister and all that. So, got a lot to think about. And I do want to see Oregon. I want to, I, you know, I think my mind's made up. I want to do a through hike. So, if I start flipping, that's not a through hike. So... And it doesn't matter if I do it all in one year, if I have to come back and do... If I get all the way to uh, the Sierras, I mean, I would have done... There was there's only a, a basic 1,000 miles left. So I would have done more than half the trail. Head east. I'm heading east. Shut the... <laughs> I'm following the trail. You don't need to tell me which way to head. I guess when the trail turns and changes directions, Google's telling you to head east or what? Head east on Pacific Crest Trail toward Pacific Crest Trail. <laughs> okay. Annoying. Oh, actually, it's cleared up. So Washington's going to give me, my last day in Washington's going to give me, well, last hiking day. I'm going to be staying in Washington. Going to clear up. Ended up hiking about 15, 16, well, hell, with that extra mile and a half spur I took. Probably did 17 and a half, but trail miles, I did about 16. <clears throat> Looking forward to, I really stink, because I have sweat the last two days. Of course, washing my clothes, washing me. <clears throat> so... We shall see. All right. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm going for real. I got to start hiking so I can get to the hotel. See you, bye.